Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this ingenious cloud-managed ECW336 Wi-Fi E6 4x4 access point. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this access point supports Wi-Fi 6E. So it supports 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz frequencies. So this also has 4x4, multi-user, multi-in, multi-out. So let's get this open. But this has all the latest stuff on it. This should be a very fast router. The ethernet on it is five gigahertz PoE plus. Pull that open. It says plug and play with zero configuration. So this is a cloud managed access point. So it makes it super easy to manage this. These cloud managed access points are great for businesses. So say you have a chain of coffee shops and you want to have Wi-Fi in them, you can set these up in your coffee shops and then you can manage them all from the cloud. Of course, these would also work well in things like hotels, businesses, schools, anywhere where you're going to have a large Wi-Fi network. So let's pull that out. Look at the bottom here. So on the bottom, we have some keyhole slots so you can mount this on screws. We have a reset button. We have a five gigabit PoE LAN port and a 12 volt DC port. Here's something about, uh, I think it's EU regulations and such. And here we have a manual or a guide. So this talks about the package contents, which we've mostly gone over. We have the access point, we have the installation guide, mounting bracket, screws, and the T-Rail mount kit. So you want to register this in the cloud. You want to connect it to your internet. You can mount it. You want to get the app and then you can scan it. And I'll go over all this. So. Let's look in here. This is going to have the mounting bracket. So we have some screws and anchors. Then we have two brackets here. And these are for different sized T-rail. So that would be for like drop ceilings and businesses. You can clip this onto it. You actually kind of rotate it on. It will clip in place. And then you can slide the access point over that. Now, if you don't have T-rail, you can just put some screws here and mount it to a ceiling. So once this is installed, you want to line it up like this. So this will slide in. And this will clip in the front here and we can pull up on that and slide it back out. So super easy to install. I forgot to mention, we also have some access lights here for power, LAN, and the three bands of Wi-Fi. So I'm going to plug this in and then I'll go over adding this to my Ingenious Cloud account. Okay, so I have an Ingenious PoE adapter here. So this side is connected to my LAN, to a switch, and this side is going to plug into the access point. Now, typically I will use a PoE switch, but for testing purposes on my bench, I'm just using this. So I'll plug this in here in the LAN port, and we can see the light is on. Uh, it's kind of hard to see the lights on, but the light is on there. So now I'm going to go into the Ingenious To Go app, and I have an account on here. It's very easy to set up. And I'll hit the plus, and I'll say register device. So it wants me to scan the QR code. So I'll turn this over, and I'll scan the code. So that was super fast. I'll hit register. It says name the device. I'll just name it ECW336. Typically, you'd want to give it a better name. I'll say assign to network now. I'll assign it to my network name network. I'll hit next. It says power up and plug the access point to the network, which I've already done. I'll hit finish setup. It says congratulations, your setup is complete. Once you finish upgrading, your network is ready to go. I'll hit finish. So now if I tap on inventory, I should see the switch here. So I see at the bottom ECW336. Okay, so that's all set up. I can connect to this now. But since this supports Wi-Fi 6E, it supports six gigahertz networks. So I want to test that. The easiest way for me to do that would be to create a separate access point with only six gigahertz on it. So I'm going to go into the web interface to do that. So let's head over to my computer now. Okay, I'm on the Ingenious Cloud site. It's cloud.ingenious.ai slash login. I'll hit sign in. I'll accept cookies. Okay, so I refresh the screen, it says everything is okay. There was an issue detected. I'm guessing it was updating firmware or something. Okay, I'm on the dashboard. I'll click manage on the left, which is this monitor. I'll go to access points, and here we can see the ECW336. I'll hit details here, and here we can see the configuration. Let's scroll down. We have throughput, radio, IP addressing, standard controls. So let's go back to manage again. And actually let's go to settings below. Let's go to access point SSID. I'll say add SSID, call it Rick makes six. I'll go down to radio and I'll uncheck 2.4 and five. So I just have six and then I'll hit apply. It says the passphrase cannot be empty. I need to go down here and enter in that passphrase. I'll hit apply. It says create SSID successfully. 
So I'll back out of here. So now we have this Rick Make 6, 6 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Go back to the dashboard. So now that I have that set up, let's head over to a computer that has a 6E Wi-Fi adapter in it and we'll run some benchmarks. Actually, before we get to the test, I have one more quick thing to do here. I want to go down to settings, access point and radio. Then go over to 6G and change the channel width to 160. So I've already done this, it was at 80. But to get our maximum speed, I need to have this up to 160. So let's get to the test. Okay, so I have a lot of things set up here for the test setup. So we have the access point here. Now I had this plugged into a PoE injector, but now I have it plugged into a switch and I'm powering it with a 12 volt adapter. So the switch I'm using is an ingenious ECS2512. This is a 2.5 gigabit switch. This will support up to five gigabit ethernet. So I have it hooked up at 2.5 gigabit to this switch. My PoE PoE injector did not support 2.5 gigabit. So that's why I'm powering it with this adapter right now. So if I was mounting this somewhere and wanted the higher speeds, I would probably not use a power adapter. I'd probably get the PoE injector or the switch that would be faster. So this switch is hooked up to the internet, which is gigabit ethernet. It's also hooked up to this network attached storage. On this is a speed test software that's on my LAN. So this NAS and the access point are connected through the switch to each other at 2.5 gigabits. Over here we have a tower PC. This has an M.2 Wi-Fi adapter. It's an Intel AX210. So let's focus in on the screen back here. So right now I have it hooked up to the 2.4 gigabit network. I'll run the speed test. Now these are only about two foot apart from each other. So this is not the most ideal conditions for testing this as far as range. I'm just testing kind of the max speed I can get out of it right here. Now 2.4 gigahertz is congested where I'm at. So there's probably many other 2.4 gigahertz networks around here. Okay, so we got 106.8 download and 98.2 upload. So that's very usable for a lot of things. I mean, you can stream movies and stuff with that. But if you're dealing with video or large files, you probably want something faster. Okay, so now I'm connected to the five gigahertz network. I'll refresh the page, start the test again. So on five gigahertz, you can see I'm pushing near gigabit speeds here. I'm running up right up against gigabit speeds. On the download, I have 990. On the upload, we're a little slower. Looks like we're gonna end up at around 750 or so. Now I have sped up portions of this video when I'm not talking just to speed it up, but the test is run all the same. So we ended up at about 730. So that's on five gigabit, so that's pretty impressive. So let's switch over to the six gigahertz. I'll refresh, I'll run the test. Okay, so now you're really seeing the speed out of this thing. So for download, we got two gigabit. For upload, we got 1.7 gigabit. Now this is on a 2.5 gigabit network. If you had this hooked up on a five gigabit network and had the bandwidth for it with the switches and everything else, you could run all three of these at the same time. So you can really push a lot of bandwidth through this access point. So that's the ingenious ECW336 Wi-Fi 6E 4x4 access point. So as I demonstrated, this can be a very fast access point. Now there are many factors that determine the speed of your access point from the network connected to it, obstructions in the building, Building, interference. So on my test, I wanted to see how fast I could get it going in my test environment. So with the six gigahertz frequencies on here, this will support newer devices that support six gigahertz. So you have that nice open band that's not as congested. Now, if you don't currently have any six gigahertz devices, another thing you can do with this is use it as a backhaul. So if you have multiples of these, you could set up a mesh network and have a six gigahertz backhaul. Then you're sending internet backhaul on six gigahertz and you could share the internet out with five gigahertz and 2.5 gigahertz frequencies. So that way you're not tying up your five gigahertz frequencies as your backhaul. Now I do prefer to have wired networks fully and wired backhauls and things like that, but I know not everyone can. So if you are talking about mesh networking, this could be a great option for that. So I just did a basic setup in this video, but within Genius Cloud, there are so many capabilities you can do with this. You can have guest networks, you can have Wi-Fi portals, multiple SSIDs, radius. This has all the features you'd expect in an enterprise Wi-Fi setup. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.